Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. Uh, so I'm working with an extremely narrow depth of field here today. Uh, I'm using one of my PCE uh, micro lenses so that I can get real close because I want to show you this motor right here. Um, so today I want to show you what a bent motor shaft looks like on one of these little micro brushless motors. So in order to do that, just pay attention to this, this section of the bell housing right there as I rotate this, this shaft around. Hopefully you can see that it, uh, it wobbles back and forth. And the other thing that you'll notice is that the propeller contacts the screw head on that rotation, but then it's, there's, there's quite a gap there on the second rotation. Contact, gap. So that is a bent motor shaft. And I'm going to show you today uh, how to fix that. There are three ways to fix it. The first way is to replace the motor, which is straightforward and I don't think it really needs any explanation, so I'm not going to show you that. The second way is to actually swap out the bell housing here. Uh, and in order to do that, we're going to take off the snap ring on the bottom and just swap the bell housing. And that'll swap the motor shaft as well. So I'm going to show you that. And then the third way would be to completely replace the motor shaft. And I may do a I'll probably do a video on that uh, at some point in the future because I have 25 motor shafts shipping to me from uh, Oversky right now. But they haven't arrived yet, so uh, video for another time. And then just for comparison here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, hang on, let me see if I can grab this quadcopter a little further back. Here's what a, here's what a non-bent motor shaft looks like when it's rotating. Hopefully you can see that. There's, there's zero wobble. The propeller uh, is the same height above the screw in both orientations. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove the three mounting screws for the motor. Okay. And now that I've done that, the motor can come right out of its socket in the ESC. So there's the ESC socket. And now we've got a detached motor. All right, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use a brand new motor as a donor. So for, for removing the screws, I use this, this regular Phillips uh, kind of like a watch screwdriver, it's tiny. And for removing the snap rings, I'm going to use these very small um, flathead screwdrivers. So uh, these all come in like this kit thing that I have. So what we need to do is we need to get this snap ring off. So the way I do that is I take a flathead screwdriver and I put it up against the snap ring and I push There we go. And then once, once it's started, I take the smaller screwdriver and I put the corner of it into that gap there. And then I just pry it out. There we go. So now my snap ring's off. You do not want to lose this snap ring. So put it somewhere safe. My screwdriver is magnetized. Sometimes Sometimes I think that's a good thing, sometimes I don't. And then uh, there's a washer in here, so you can lift up the washer. <laughs> Theoretically, anyway. I usually just turn the motor upside down, but yeah, let's just turn the motor upside down. It should just come off. There it is. Okay. So now uh, this bell housing is free uh, from the uh, base, you know, and I, I know there are fancy motor terms for this, like commutator and stator and stuff like that, but I don't know what the appropriate terms are for a brushless motor. So anyway, 
It's free at this point, and what I do is I just grab it by the base and I pull. And there's a little bit of magnetic friction there. And depending on how bent your motor shaft is, that might be extremely difficult to do. You might have to rotate it around a little bit to find an angle where it's going to come out. Uh, but yeah, just, just eyeballing this, I can definitely tell that that uh, shaft is, is bent. And then I'm going to repeat the same process with this other motor. Come on. There we go. Okay. So you'll notice that I'm keeping, I, I can keep track of these and keep these two separate. Uh, there are some manufacturing changes between these different motors. You can see that the original motor had a very thin base here and the, the new motor has a thick base. Uh, I think this is actually the old style and that's the new style, but this is the one that I was using on the copter. So this is the one I'm gonna, that I'm gonna replace. Uh, so yeah, they've, they've changed some of the manufacturing uh, things about these over the over a course of time. So you have to be careful about that. Sometimes, I think sometimes the shaft links will even be a little different. Okay, so that one came off very easily. And now I can just set that aside. You, you want to be careful not to scratch these wires. They're enamel coated. Um, I probably shouldn't have set that down on, on top of the wire. And then we're just going to put this back together. So this is a fresh bell housing. There we go. And what I'm doing now is I'm looking, there's a, there's a groove where the snap ring goes, right, right here. And I'm just kind of looking there to see if I've got enough room for the washer and the snap ring. And it looks like I do. If you don't, then you have to take a block of wood and a brass punch and gently tap the, uh, the motor shaft down until you have room. I had to do that with one of mine. I'll probably demonstrate that technique uh, when I replace the motor shaft in a later video. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my washer and just place it back on there. Now this is the hardest part of the whole process, getting the snap ring seated again. So hopefully this goes quickly and easily, but I, uh, I don't have my hopes up. It's usually a very painful process. Here we go. Usually I just push from this side. It's a little magnetized, so it gives me an assist. Oh! Did that work? Holy crap, I think that worked on the first try. Did it? Yeah, I think it did. There's a little bit of a gap there. And again, I think that's the difference in the manufacturing process between the two. Um, I think that's probably fine, so I'm just gonna run it that way. What that means is that the bell housing will lift a little bit in flight. Um, anyway, I might fix that off camera, but you get the point. Uh, that, that is how to swap a motor bell housing on one of these micro um, motors. Okay, uh, I just wanted to make a little side note here because I ran into a, an issue when I was uh, repairing my copter today by doing this uh, bell housing swap uh, that I think everybody should be aware of. So it, it's pretty difficult to see in this light, but uh, this motor here is shinier than all of these other three. Okay, uh, there are actually four different versions of the Oversky motor. Uh, so the, f the first version is matte. I refer to these, these three as matte, and I, I refer to that one as shiny. So the first version is matte. It, uh, the base, the actual part that, like the three-lobe uh, screw base that mounts to the, uh, the frame, the base is 1.16 millimeters thick, and it, it takes an M1.2 mounting screw, okay? The second version is also matte. It's a little thinner. It, it's 0.96 millimeters thick, and it takes an M1.2 mounting screw. The third version is even thinner still, and it's really, really thin. 
In fact, it's so thin that they changed the mounting screw. Uh, so it's 0.6 millimeters thick and it takes an M1.4 mounting screw. So that one's really important because if you ever get one with a really thin base, you have to use a different screw, otherwise you'll strip the hole and, and your motor will, will come off. Uh, and then the fourth version is shiny and it has an 0.96 millimeter thick base and it also takes an M1.2 mounting screw. So the shiny one here, uh, the shiny one right here, takes the same screw as uh, this one and this one. This is the very thin one here. So uh, if we look, I'll just turn the, the thing up here and refocus the lens. Okay. So if we look here, we can see that uh, this base is very thin and this base over here is a little bit thicker. Okay. That's all I wanted to point out. So this is, this is the thinnest and that's the thickest. Well, that's probably the middle thick thickness. And this one's the same thickness as this one over here, I think. But this one's shiny. Okay, now that's important because, well, it's important to know that there are at least four different versions. Those are the four versions that I've come across. I, I've bought eight motors and I've gotten four different versions in those eight motors. So, kind of crazy. Uh, now, the reason why this is important for bell, uh, bell housing swaps is because the shiny bell housing cannot be put on a matte base, at least in my experience. Every time I tried to put a, a shiny bell housing on a matte base, when I would start up the motor, the motor would stutter. It would, it would kind of turn, it, it was almost like there was a, a, a bad ESC, but if I would swap out the motor with another motor on the same ESC, it worked fine. Now, uh, that said, it seems like the shiny bases can take matte bell housings. So you can put a uh, shiny base on and then you can use either a shiny bell housing or a matte bell housing. But the matte bases can only take matte bell housings. So uh, that was very important for me. I thought I had two bad motors earlier today and it turned out that I was just using shiny bell housings on a matte base. And in order to fix that, I, had to, I, I swapped one shiny bell housing over to the shiny base and then the other one I had to take a uh, shiny bell housing with a straight uh, shaft, a straight motor shaft, and swap the motor shaft onto one of the spare matte bell housings that I had. So again, I'll make another video uh, sometime in the near future about how to sh uh, swap the uh, shafts in bell housings. But uh, for now, just keep in mind that there are four different versions and it'll bite you if you're not careful. So anyway, this is Jesse with Create This. Thanks for watching, and uh, if this was helpful to you, please subscribe.